be with you. I'm going to give you a little tip first off, okay? So uh, when they ask you to go to the bull riding competition, you draw a killer. Try not to show off and stay on for 10 seconds, okay? It's not what really happened, but it's a better story than what really happened. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm a little, little disappointed. I'm honored to be with you. You probably wonder, what, what is a Utah State representative doing in Iowa speaking to you good, you good folks? I was talking to Carl here just a minute ago. What, what a cool opportunity you just had with Governor Jindal. And, and you guys get to do this all the time. They don't even come to Utah. They don't. I mean, they just know. We know Utah. We know where you're going. They don't even come to Utah. But think about what you get to do. You get to influence the policy for the nation. In talking to Carl, he says, everybody comes and talks about the problems. Everyone comes and talks about the problems. I think the reason Shane invited me here is to talk about real solutions that are big enough for so many of the pressing problems we face as a nation. Governor Jindal said, our best days are ahead. And indeed, I believe they are. And I think my job is to show you how we get there, specifically logistically, tangibly, how do we get there? There are solutions big enough. Now, how many of you are on Facebook? Okay, Twitter? Some? How many email? Okay, so, so if you follow me on Facebook, I'll follow you back. If you follow me on Twitter, I'll follow you back. You can like the American Lands Council Facebook page and follow us on Twitter, we'll follow you back. Imagine the power that we have. Benjamin Franklin set type one letter at a time. And Thomas Paine set, letter, set type one letter at a time, and they changed the world. Look at the opportunity we have to get these messages out. Let's go to the next slide, okay? I love this quote. This is Harry Truman. We don't propose, like some people, to meet today's problems by saying they don't exist and tomorrow's problems by wishing tomorrow wouldn't come. It's time to bring solutions forward. And in Iowa, more than anyone, you can take real solutions, and you can take them right to the White House. That's why I'm here. I could be home with my kids right now. I would love to be home with my kids right now, with my wife. But we have a duty and we have an opportunity to bring things forward. And so that's why I'm here talking to you, because you have the ability to transmit that directly to the White House and set that policy throughout the nation. Go ahead, next slide. So on the website, there's a take action uh, button on the website. If you get on the website, log in, AmericanLandsCouncil.org. If you're tweeting, hashtag free the lands. And we're going to talk about what that means. Go ahead. Yeah, don't go there. There we go. We don't have a clicker, I guess, huh? Okay, we should be able to just go to the next slide, right? Here we go, just go down to that, yeah. Yeah, go to that one. Actually, so yeah, if, you, if, you're, if you're texting, you can text 801-416-2543. You can log right in and, and, and be part of this. We'll go to the next slide, let's talk about this, okay? All right, so I want this half of the room to imagine this is your house, okay? This is your house. You love your house, right? You wouldn't want to live anywhere else, right? You, 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 you love where you live. But your city, your city comes out and they issue a new ordinance. And the ordinance is, go ahead and go to the next slide. The ordinance is you can no longer use 50% of your house. 50% of your house is off limits, locked up. And in the 50% of your house that's locked up is your kitchen. And the shutoff valves to your gas and your power and your water. So if anything goes wrong, you can't stop the problem, okay? Now, this house over here, you're the neighbors. You live right next door to them. Now, you get to pay them for the food that they can't eat because their kitchen's locked off. And you pay for the city to enforce and monitor this ordinance so that they don't use 50% of their house. You with me? And then also, if there's any damage to their house because they can't shut off the gas and the water or the electricity, you get to pay for the damage to their house, and if it happens to burn over and damage your house, guess what? You get to pay for that too. But since they're so dependent on the city and you paying to feed them and, and provide for them, they're gonna vote for whatever the city wants. You see how that might affect you? Right? This is what we're talking about. Go ahead, go to the next slide. 
This is what we're talking about. Now, I want to show you something really cool that I found before I came here. This cool little book. This is Iowa Public Land Disposal. Do you know how much public land you have in Iowa today? You have 0.1%. 0.1%. There was a day when you were 90% federally controlled land in your state. And you battled with your surrounding states and compelled the federal government to transfer that public land. You've already done this. Look at what it says right here in this book. It, the interest of the United States and settlers upon the public land, in my opinion, would be subserved by having the land surveyed, brought into market at as early a day as practical. So long as the lands are withheld from sale, there is a feeling of insecurity which retards the prosperity of the whole country and affects injuriously the energies and the enterprise of the people. Go ahead, next slide. If the title to the public domain had been retained, this is you guys in Iowa talking about public land, right? If the title to the public land had been retained by the nation, who would have labored to clear the forest, break the prairie, develop the natural resources? It was the work of the pioneers, you folks and your ancestors. The value comes from, from neighbors, schools, churches, mills, stores, and the pioneers were ready to defend what their enterprise and industry had earned. You already fought this fight for the good of the nation. Go ahead. So here you go. This is, and, and your enabling act, your, your act of admission as statehood, Word for word the same as Oregon's. Word for word the same. I, it says this state will never interfere with the primary disposal of the soil. The United States has title to it. Their job, like a trustee, is to dispose of that land. Your promise, same as Oregon's. Go ahead, next slide. There is a solution big enough. I came to this in kind of a roundabout sort of way. Um, you, I mean, you look at that. So the map, the map, the red on that map is the federally controlled land today. Iowa used to be worse than Nevada. And the surrounding states used to be worse than Nevada. Go ahead to the next slide. I came to this in a roundabout sort of way. I used to work for the mayor of the city of Osaka in Japan. Go ahead, click again. Just click a couple of times. Right there. There you go. I used to work for the mayor of the city of Osaka in Japan. And uh, when I got there, they said, look, we're glad to have you here. Most important bilateral relationship in the world. But just so you know, we're looking to China because you and the United States of America in the mid to late 80s have already broken the basic law of economics. You're supposed to produce more than you consume, invest the difference in additional production capacity. History tells us you're on the way out, so we're looking to China. Really ticked me off. I started studying economics and I started talking to candidates like you all have been doing here in Washington and saying, what are you going to do about this? This was back when the debt was only $2 trillion, $3 trillion, $4 trillion. Weren't those the days, right? I mean, now we're $20 trillion and $100 trillion in unfunded obligations. But we started talking about, guys, this is going to be a real serious problem. And even back then, they had no answers, no real solutions to the problem. I thought, I've got to run for the state house to protect my children. First, first session in office realized that in Utah, much like Iowa and most of the states, more than 30% of our revenue in Utah comes from a federal government that tells us every year it's broke. Imagine that business plan in your business. Hey, partners, guess what? 50% of our revenue comes from one customer. They're telling us they're broke. Let's just keep doing that. What could go wrong with that, right? That's what's happening in our states. And so realizing that, also, we're $2.5 billion below average in per pupil funding in Utah. There's no way you tweak the tax code and get out of that big of a problem. We have to deal with big solutions. That's where we came to this, this land solution. That's where we looked at 67% of the land in the state of Utah is federally controlled. We have counties that have less than 3% taxable land. Let me show you why it matters to you. Go ahead, next slide. Next slide. So what's happening right now, more than 50% of the land west of the Rocky Mountains is controlled by the federal government. More than 50% of the land. And the way they manage it is, is kind of like in a museum. You've been to museums, right? You know what kind of animals are in museums? Dead ones, right? Dead and dusty. The federal government manages 640 million acres, more than 50% of the West, like it's a museum. Hands off, don't touch. Go ahead, next slide. And, and because of this, right, I mean, we all, we all want healthy air, water, wildlife, right? We all want safe and vibrant communities. We all want abundant recreation. You okay? All right? Okay. I'm just going to keep checking on you. All right. I mean, we all want these things, right? But, but what we're being told is to have bureaucrats thousands of miles away manage the lands, and this is what we're getting. We're getting, go ahead, next slide. This is what we're getting from, from this museum management from Washington. So going from left to right, you have billions of board feet harvested. Going from, from more than 6 billion board feet harvested 
down to less than one. And that's millions of acres burned from two million acres. This year, we're, the, the federal, federal lands burned more than 10 million acres this year. Next slide. This year, that's going to be completely off the charts. It'll be completely up the top of the slide. The amount of forested acres burned. Go ahead, next slide. Now, this is crazy, okay? In, in Montana this year, Montana has some of the best firefighters in the nation. Montana State. Their helicopters carry more water. They carry it faster. They put out fires at an average of 10 acres, right? 10 acres. Federal government's burning 10 million acres. 10 acres. Fire came off the federal force. Five crews of Montana foresters ready to roll to put out the fire. Forest Service said, you can't mobilize because your helicopters, remember, that carry more water and that are faster, your helicopters aren't on our approved list. So they sat there while thousands of acres burned, animals burned, polluted the, polluted the air, destroyed the watershed. Next slide. Of course, when it burns, the, the, the air quality, the, the, the smoke and the carcinogens, more than smoke stacks, more, more than smoke stacks, more than tailpipes coming off of 10 million acres. Next slide. Then when the fire burns, then that's the sponge. There's nothing there to hold back the water. So now you get the runoff, and the watersheds are destroyed for generations. Next slide. In fact, University of California Merced scientists just in June of this year said if they just maintained the Sierra Nevadas like a garden that you all know so well, if you just harvested the trees to the sustainable density, they would conserve in drought-stricken California way more than a quarter trillion gallons of water a year. And they would have money to fund education and public safety and have a healthier forest. And instead we get lose, lose, lose under distant bureaucratic museum management. Next slide. So this is in northern Nevada two years ago. Little bear cub, they called her cinder bear. She's walking through this, this catastrophic forest, burned up to her elbows. Luckily, she finds a spot that's not an inferno, collapses under a trailer. They find her. She's the lucky one. They nurse her back to health, only to be released into another overgrown catastrophic forest. Next slide. Millions aren't so lucky. Millions aren't so lucky. For every acre burned, they estimate five, five vertebrates are incinerated. 10 million acres just this year. This is, this is, it, it doesn't have to be this way. I mean, it doesn't have to be this way. Go ahead, next slide. Oh, don't, oh, I didn't think that would play. Go ahead and click to the next slide. I didn't think that would actually play. There we go. So what, what that last slide, you would see a picture of a woman. So this is Josephine County, Oregon. Woman in Josephine County, Oregon calls the sheriff, and she says, or she calls 911, and she says, help, there's someone beating down my door. Can you send the sheriff out? 911 says, I'm sorry, the sheriff only operates from 9 to 5. Can you ask him to go away? She says, I already tried that. She said, can you call back tomorrow? The sheriff only works from 9 to 5. And she was raped and brutalized because the sheriff's department is funded by timber receipts. Josephine County had some of the most productive forests in the world that have now been shut down by extremists and bureaucrats, and it's now a tinderbox liability that used to fund public safety. Sheriff Gilbertson used to have 30 sheriff's deputies. He's down to two. They used to have some of the best-funded schools in the nation. Now they're on Title I funding almost all their schools. It doesn't have to be this way. But this is what passes for environmentalism but there is a solution big enough. Oh, so go ahead, no, back to that slide. Two years ago, the federal government in their own budget disputes shut down all the national parks. These are assets that actually produce money. In Utah, it's a $10 billion industry. They shut them down overnight. And, and those are the assets they shut down. In fact, uh, Mount Rushmore, they, they put barricades miles back so you couldn't even see Mount Rushmore from the highway because there were some memos that said, make it hurt. This is what museum management, bureaucratic management looks like. Go ahead, next slide. So the Government Accountability Office, the Government Accountability Office three years ago testifying to Congress said there is more recoverable oil in Utah, Colorado, and Wyoming than the rest of the world combined, locked up in federally controlled lands. What would energy independence mean for Iowa? What would it mean for the entire nation? Next slide. This is 60 Minutes about four months ago. 60 Minutes said, modern life's devices are in the grips of China. Let's think about what those modern life devices are. All of your computer technology, your smartphones, renewable energy technology, and all of our military technology require rare earth elements to function. China has controlled 90% of the market share of rare earth elements, and yet from New Mexico to Alaska, we have an abundance of rare earth elements locked up in museum management by federal bureaucrats thousands of miles away. 
If China were to call and say, we're not sending you rare earths anymore, we couldn't put a military on the field. Does that matter to Iowa? Next slide. So you've got on the upper left, you've got federally controlled lands. On the upper right, these are roadless rules and wilderness. Lower left, wildfires more than 250 acres. Notice a similarity. Lower left, $150 trillion in mineral value locked up in federally controlled lands. Are you starting to connect the dots on solutions when we're $20 trillion in debt and $100 trillion in unfunded obligations? Just like you folks in Iowa, in your history with the public lands, said this is how you make the nation productive? Go ahead, next slide. So there was a report done about four months ago, Property Environmental Research Center out of Bozeman. And they said that by all accounts, our federal lands are in trouble, both in terms of economic performance, but also environmental stewardship. Next slide. Get this. For every dollar that the federal government spends managing public lands, it loses 27 cents. Now, of course, they, they, their theory is they're going to make it up in the volume, right? Exactly. Now, the states, on the other hand, for every dollar that the states, the western states, spend managing public land, states already manage millions of acres of public land. For every dollar the states spend managing public land, we generate, on average, a positive $14.51. Feds lose $0.27 cents per dollar spent, the states make $14.51. And yet you've got groups out there that want to increase control and keep us from having the freedom on our lands. They say, oh, you couldn't afford to do that. Well, you're right. We can't afford to do it the way the federal government does it. We can't afford not to do it the way the states already manage millions of acres of public land. Um, the yeah, Forest Service can't even keep up with its mission. It's, it's killing the land. Go ahead. Um, go ahead. So what we're talking about is multiple use lands. We're not talking about national parks. We're not talking about military Indian reservations. We're talking about multiple use lands for the federal government to transfer those to the states. Go ahead. So the idea is to free the lands and we can tend them more like a garden. You guys know gardening here, right? Right? So, so think about this. You've got a garden that is your livelihood. It's your source of food. You know the conditions, you know the soil, you know the climate, you know the pests, you're right there if anything goes wrong. Who would you rather have manage that garden? Would you rather manage it or would you rather someone thousands of miles away that knows nothing about your climate and your conditions to manage the garden? Right? I mean, it makes sense. Go ahead, next slide. Canada's already done this. Over the last decade, Canada, our neighbor to the north, Socialist Canada has transferred land, water, and resources to the provinces and territories because they discovered that when those closest to the land manage the land, they get better decisions. And what they're finding, I mean, they discovered that, right? What they're finding is they're getting better results economically and environmentally by having those closest to the land, whose lives and livelihoods depend upon the land, manage them, rather than burning up the forest polluting the air, destroying the watershed, killing the animals, depressing the communities, and rendering them unsafe. There are answers. There are simple answers. Go ahead. So it's time to free these lands for the entire nation so that we get healthier environment, more abundant recreation, safe, vibrant communities. Go ahead. So at the website, you can log in, you can sign and text and get in on the website. Go ahead. Next slide. Next slide. So we've got a book back here. I wrote a little book called Where's the Line? How states protect the Constitution because there's no one to blame but us right John Dickinson said it will be the state's own fault if they allow the federal government to interfere in the things of their sovereignty there's copies back there if you log into the website I'll, I'll give you a copy of this we've had legislatures all over the state call and get copies so their legislators have this book to know where that line is on what they're supposed to be doing so I've got copies in the back just just sign into our website we'll give you a copy of that we got these cool little pins that you can get back there as well. Go ahead, next slide. How much time have we got, Shane? Do we? Okay, let's um, let me let me just let's go through. Let me just catch a couple couple slides at the end. There's, let's go ahead. Just keep going through. I'll get you to the uh, life, liberty, property. You know that. You know we're the boss, right? Deriving their just powers from the consent of the governed. This question started during the Revolutionary War. The federal government was only a trustee. Keep going. Keep going. Keep going. Legal review, all sorts of stuff in what we're doing. Keep going. No, keep going. Keep, keep going. Here we go. This is actually a cool story. We'll have to tell you that next time. Wait, wait, wait. Back up, back up to that. You've got to know this. Back up right there to the bicycle. Oh, you're killing me here. All right, so think about that, okay? 
Think about that. How many of you think that the answer to that predicament is to have a stronger writer? What if we just had Lance Armstrong in his prime all souped up on goofballs or whatever he was taking? Is that the answer? What if we just veer the bicycle a little bit to the left or a little bit to the right? Is that the answer? No, you've got to restore balance, right? That's the whole situation. We have a system problem. Go ahead and click through just a couple. I want to give you this last part because this is what we need you to do in Iowa. Keep going. That's all in the book. If you get a copy of the book, this is all in there. Go ahead. Keep going. I've got to tell you about this gentleman right here. Keep going. One more. Next one. No, keep going. Here we go, right here. No, back up. This is what it used to look like. This is what it used to look like. From Michigan to Iowa to Louisiana to Florida, 90% federally controlled for decades. Florida used to send resolutions to Congress saying we're the worst off of all the western states. Because you're not disposing of our land. Go ahead, next slide. Next slide. It was one guy that solved this problem. You guys are finding that guy right now. One guy, his name was Thomas Hart Benton, Democrat senator from Missouri. He said, my election to the Senate found me doing battle for changing this system of disposing of the public lands. He did that for Iowa. He said, I resolved to move against the whole system. I did it in a bill, but more so in talking to the people, because we know that government derives their just powers from the consent of the governed. And if we want to be treated like the boss, we have to act like the boss. Next slide. He said, the federal government was a monopolizer of the vacant lands of the West. He was talking about you all in Iowa. Like all monopolies, it results in a hardship. Next slide. He says, but the members of Congress should fix their eyes steadily on the period of the speedy extinction of the federal title to all the lands within their boundaries, and they did. Go ahead, next slide. Next slide. That's right. This is my ask of you, okay? Who's going to be the Thomas Hart Benton in this election? There's a solution big enough. You've got, you've got the information right here. There is a solution big enough for so many of the problems that face our nation. We can't put a military on the field right now without China's say-so. We're dependent for our energy on nations in the Middle East that don't like us. We've got minerals that are, that are locked up and burning tens of millions of acres of forested lands that kill hundreds of millions of animals, destroy watershed, and pollute the air. Look at the solutions we have the opportunity to bring to the table. And so what I'm asking you is to find that Thomas Hart Benton. And would you send me an email and let me know if the slide comes up? My email is ken at americanlandscouncil.org. Ken at americanlandscouncil.org. Come back and get a copy of this book back here. Take some of these materials. Take extras of those cards. And when people ask you, what are we going to do about this? Say, so you know there's an answer. And it goes back to liberty, property, self-governance, going back to that original recipe and finding that Thomas Hart Benton that's going to bring real solutions to these pressing problems instead of just wringing our hands, Carl, right? Everybody can talk about the problems. It's time to talk about the solutions. Let me just close with this, okay? Ronald Reagan, 1987. Height of the Cold War. Red phones, the whole thing, right? I mean, it was tense. Some of you, you all remember that. If he were here today, I'm positive he would say the exact same thing. He said, this is a wonderful time to be alive. We're lucky not to live in pale and timid times. We've been blessed with the opportunity to stand for something, for liberty and freedom and fairness, and I would add property as the master resource. And these are things worth fighting for, worth devoting our lives to. So let us go forth with good cheer and stout hearts, happy warriors, out to seize back a country and a world to freedom. Thank you very much. I'm counting on you all. Probably have time for say one question. Well, we've talked today about an $18 trillion uh, federal deficit, which uh, was estimated this morning as high as maybe 150 to $200 trillion. And we, you talked about the lost opportunities of these federal lands. Is there some uh, synergy between those two that privatization and sale of these federal lands could be used to pay off that federal deficit? Yeah, and so, and so privatization is not really the way to go after 100 years, right? So, so you, want the, you want the egg rather than the goose. You want the golden egg. You want to make them productive. Because what happens after 100 years when the federal government didn't keep the same promise that it kept to you, we've got grazing and mining and ranching and recreation and all these different interests that are property rights that have vested. And so the idea is transfer the land to the state just like they did to Texas, just like they did to Hawaii, as a matter of fact just like they did to Tennessee and others, transfer them to the state so the local governments can sort out those interests. But instead of having Garfield County be 3% taxable land 
And in fact, Garfield County just did a declaration of an economic state of emergency. Because after Clinton named the monument, he locked up two million acres and two trillion dollars worth of the world's cleanest burning coal. In Garfield County, Garfield County, their schools are now closing. They've gone from 150 K through 12 students down to 50. Once their schools close, you know, the community's gone. And they've just done an economic state of emergency. And they want to go out and name more monuments. So, no, it's, so what you do is you unleash that, right? Where the, 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 the timber receipts used to be some of the best, the best revenue coming into the federal government. Now it's a liability. So we've got the opportunity to take what federal bureaucratic museum management has turned into a catastrophic liability and turn it into an asset, right, on, on leasing of oil and gas and mining and those sorts of things, opportunities. But the biggest thing is the environmental destruction. We have the opportunity to protect our lands and keep them pristine, open access by letting the, garden, let, letting the gardener right on the land who knows the land manage the land. So, and, that, and that, if I had time, I'd tell you how in the farm bill just last year, because these, these counties are deprived of the ability to tax the land, they, they pay, Congress pays what they call PIL, payment in lieu of the taxes that you all get to collect. Payment in lieu of taxes. We call it pennies in lieu of trillions, right? Payment in lieu of taxes. Congress pays what they feel like, when they feel like, but local government completely depend upon that to run their, their, their communities. Just last year in the Farm Bill, Congress extracted a trillion dollars in increased food stamps by holding $400 million in these PILT payments hostage to garner all the Western votes. So federal government grew at a trillion dollars because they hold 400 million hostage in the West, and that comes right out of your pocket. Tell you what, That's I'll let him talk, talk to you about that privately. We have to, to move on. Thank you very much. The reason I'm here away from my family and my children is I'm counting on you to find Thomas Hart Benton to bring forward the only solution big enough. Thank you very much.